Joining us now on the Norman Goldman Show is Congressman Joe Sestak. Today, just today, on September 11th, Congressman Sestak attended a Pennsylvania memorial with family and friends who lost loved ones on 9-11-2001. Congressman Sestak's perspective on September 11th and foreign policy comes from being the highest-ranking Vietnam, pardon me, the highest-ranking veteran elected to Congress after spending 31 years in the Navy. Before September 11th, Congressman Joe Sestak served as Director of Defense Policy on President Clinton's National Security Council. He worked for the Pentagon on the day of the attacks, where he stayed through the morning to help first responders. In the aftermath of September 11th, he became the first director of, quote, Deep Blue, the Navy's anti-terrorism unit, and was on the ground in Afghanistan. Then he became the Deputy Chief of Naval Operations, where he helped revamp the Navy's policies for fighting terrorism, and apparently he never sleeps because he's been a very busy man. He's now been elected. He's been a congressman from Pennsylvania for some time and is running for the United States Senate next year, a Democrat, and uh, it is my pleasure and privilege to welcome uh, Congressman Joe Sestak to the Norman Goldman Show. Norm, thanks for having me very much. Congressman, this is a very, very somber day, and... uh, I know that you helped honor the families of the plane that went down in Pennsylvania on its way to Washington. Where are we in terms of the Afghanistan war, and how do we win it? Well, Afghanistan, as the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff said two years ago, has spiraled downward. And that was primarily due to our focus on Iraq rather than finishing the job in Afghanistan. That said... We are in a pretty tough situation right now, but the strategy is really no longer Afghanistan. It's really the safe haven that al-Qaeda has in Pakistan, which must be exterminated. I look at Afghanistan primarily as a base from which we help Pakistan eradicate that safe haven, so never again can al-Qaeda have an opportunity to quietly, calmly, deliberately plan against us. And then a deliberate redeployment from Afghanistan, leaving behind the strong probability that the stability left behind will never permit a safe haven there to in the future for terrorists. And so this is going to be one where a bit more deliberation is due, but it's necessary for our security. Well, Congressman Joe Sestak is with us here on the Norman Goldman Show. Congressman, what what do we do about the the waning? I mean, Speaker Pelosi the other day noted that there is waning interest in the Afghan war and sending more troops out of the Congress as a whole. And certainly public op- opinion polls are showing that uh, the public is losing interest in Afghanistan. What do we do to get something happening quickly there before we just uh, cut and run? We need to have a strategy from the... Clinton, uh, excuse me, Obama administration that clearly lays out that it's really Al Qaeda that struck us. That's our goal. Letting people remember that hey, 9/11 can never happen again. And second, they need an exit strategy, not with a date certain, but a strategy that lays out the benchmarks for success and failure by which the public can see how well we are doing. I think that transparency, which has been absent in Afghanistan and Iraq for way too long is necessary. But I have to tell you, it will take leadership, not quietly letting Afghanistan go on the back burner, but reminding everyone that this is not a war that we elected. This is a war that's necessary, not in Afghanistan any longer, because the Taliban there number really only about 20,000 of which only 30% are truly radicalized Taliban. The rest are primarily there because they don't have any other way to earn a living. So this is not like the insurrection of 250,000 Afghanis against the Russians who came in and murdered and killed one million Afghanis and gave rise to an insurrection. We can deliberately, quietly win this effort by leaving behind a stable area. But again, it will take leadership upon our presidents and other members to say, look, we're not trying to build up to win a military victory. 
We want to eradicate al-Qaeda and leave behind with the tools of the economy that, that we leave them, the tools of justice, the tools of education, a society that can become self-sustaining on their own. Congressman Joe Sestak with us here on the Norman Goldman Show. I want to switch gears on you, Congressman, because we're all talking about health care. And, of course, the president gave his speech to the nation in the joint session of Congress a couple of nights ago. Uh, Congressman Joe Wilson uh, had his outburst of you lie. Uh, what do you think are the prospects of actually getting real significant health care reform done this year? I think they're good. I do. There will be a health bill that passes. The question is, that word you used so well, Norm, reform. We will cover everyone. That's a moral requirement. But it happens to coincide with an economic necessity to reform the health bill, uh, healthcare system at the same time. To affect that, two things have to occur besides mandating everyone's covered. And that's to remove the rationing power that insurance companies have today by denying coverage for pre-existing conditions or denying coverage once you go in after 10 years of having a policy, show up greatly, uh, acutely ill, uh, cancer for example, and they find something several years, a decade early when you filled out your form that was an administrative error and deny you coverage. I've seen it happen by those who've come into my office to seek help in overturning that. So we do remove that. But the real key is the public option. Because 92% of all insurance markets for health care in America, according to the Department of Justice's criteria, are in non-competitive pricing markets. Take Pennsylvania, where I live. 70% of all private health care plans are in two large corporations. It's it's almost a near monopoly. And so, therefore, they dictate prices. Unless the public option, which is a choice and which is not funded by the government, but by only those who choose to join it, like a Blue Cross Blue Shield choosing to join it, the co-pays and the premiums have to keep it going. But there's not the high administrative cost because they won't pay CEOs $20 million for their salary or $70 million severance pay or high advertising costs. Because of that lower administrative cost, they become attractive for people to choose to join. And all of a sudden, the two large corporations in Pennsylvania and elsewhere begin more competitive pricing. That's a necessity, I believe, yet that's the key that I'm concerned about getting through Congress. Congressman Joe Sestak of Pennsylvania, Democrat of Pennsylvania, here with us on the Norman Goldman Show. Congressman, you hit the nail right on the head a moment ago when you talked about the mandate. Now, during the campaign last year, it was Senator Clinton, then Senator Clinton, who was talking about the mandate, and then Senator Obama saying no, no mandate. But in the speech a couple of nights ago, the president seemed to embrace the mandate. What what scares me is that we will get a mandate which will force people under penalty of breaking the law and fines, presumably, force us into the arms of these you know, waiting insurance companies grinning greedily, but we'll have no escape hatch. We'll have no public option to, you know, to, to run out an escape hatch and, and get some coverage at a reasonable price on a nonprofit yes. basis. So, Congressman Sestak, is there a chance we're going to get a mandate and no public option? There is that risk, and but the, and you said it well. Look, the tens of millions of Americans who don't have health insurance are a new market that will be mandated to be covered, and so the insurance companies want that new market. But, well, wait a moment. But we want you to have a competitor to bring down your prices. We don't want them to get the – I don't want them to get the – millions of cover Americans to cover, but they still dictate the prices. Here's what I did hear, though, the president also say, that in those markets where there's not an affordable choice, he will ensure there is a choice. Now, how that comes about, other than a public option, I have yet to see what can do it. And so I want you to know, Norm, I'm going to be in there fighting hard for that public option, because in the long term, Covering everyone is absolutely needed. It is, as the president said, part of our character to ensure this happens. But if we don't start pulling down the growth of that of the health care prices, 
by fairer competition, boy, it's going to eat up one-third of our gross domestic product within 30 years, and that's not a competitive economy. That's why there's got to be something out there. Call it public auction. Call it a dog. Call it a cat. Call it something, but let's have some fair competition out there. Well, Congressman Joe Sestak, Democrat of Pennsylvania, I can't thank you enough for being here with us on the Norman Goldman Show. I just want to leave you with this. Please don't drive me into the arms of the insurance companies and not leave me a way to get away from them. (laughs) (laughs) Will do. I'm fighting every day for it. And, Norm, I'd be honored to come back sometime in the future. We will invite you back just very soon, and thank you so much. Have a great weekend, and we look forward to seeing you in the United States Senate very soon. Thank you. I'm looking forward to it also to serve Pennsylvanians and the nation. Thank we'll, you. We'll talk with you again soon. Thank you so much. Congressman Joe Sestak here on the Norman Goldman Show. Now, we didn't get into the politics of it, but Congressman Sestak is running for the United States Senate against a guy named Arlen Specter, who claims he's now a Democrat, but he only converted from the Republican Party about three months ago. So uh, Joe Sestak has my support, and I hope he has yours as well.